Today, this hoof was hidden in amongst this group of cows. That is all of the cows that we're trimming today, and this is the Hoof GP. The vast majority of cattle handling and cattle hoof trimming you see on this channel is edited. Not because I want to hide anything from you, but because I want to spare you the boredom. I want to eliminate any dead parts where nothing is really happening. But the trim you can see right now and the cattle handling is in real time. This is the speed that we work at on a day to day. And we can only do that when the cow's feet are really good, just like they are at this farm. Although having said that, as you're about to see in this video, they are all good, but some of them are far from perfect. I'm sorry for making you feel like you're not good enough Cause you're the best, you know I'm sorry for making you feel like you're not good enough Give me a chance, yeah baby try, try, try just one more night You see, most of them are just like that. In, out, next one in, nice easy trim, and on to the next cow. They're not all bad. In fact, most of them have nothing wrong with them. But don't tell the farmers that because I need to get paid. You see, you're getting on just fine. You do 40 or 50 cows like that. No real major issues. And then along comes Polly. And in this case, Polly is behind me right now. Just one more night Then make up your mind, mind, mind Please don't say That it's goodbye, bye, bye If you just believe it I know we can make it I deliberately showed you the video of the cows coming into the parlour at the very beginning of this video because that's when hoof trimmers like me spot problems like this. Polly doesn't want to touch the ground with that front right foot and it's little wonder why when we pick it up to see what's wrong. Two seconds in with the grinder and this happens. Look at that, so straight away we've started grinding away to remove this excess horn here and she's bleeding from the inside. Clearly we have not touched in here where the blood is coming from so that's not our fault but grinding here has insulted it enough for it to actually bleed. This is bad, really bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop using the grinder on that inside claw. We'll prepare the outside claw for a block because she's definitely going to need a block. And then we'll go at the medial claw with the knife to try and protect her as much as possible. So we are leaving that inside claw alone just now, but we need to grind down the outside claw. We need to make sure it's completely flat so there's no undulations so that the block will stick perfectly. This white powder at the tip of my finger is natural shedding. And if we don't remove it, it's naturally going to shed away, which will mean the block of the glue becomes detached because naturally it's falling away. If that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense in the comments. It did to me. We're going to spray all this out so that we can see properly what we're actually dealing with now that we can see there's such a major problem in there. This isn't just water. This is kind of like heavy scrub, kind of like what surgeons use to to clean their hands off before an operation. Not that this is an operation, because it is definitely not, but it doesn't harm to have an antibacterial agent in there, does it? So we might as well use it rather than water. And to be honest, it's so cheap, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so clearly there's a cavity here. Look, if I put the edge of my knife inside it, you can see it goes under. So, so it goes quite far back, actually, and under here. This is really interesting, actually. If we zoom in on this, these little lines they look like striations on metal, that's a good word, isn't it? Striations. But these are where the lamina attach the inside of the cow's hoof. This is the actual attachment of the inside of the hoof to the outside of the hoof. And they're blown apart. 
Anyway, let's get all of this excess hoof horn removed and get her much more comfortable. Sometimes these things may seem overcomplicated, but if we don't know what we're looking at, how can we possibly know whether we should keep it or cut it away? Just that force there removing this hoof horn has caused a little bit more bleeding. It's absolutely horrible and really... You really find yourself gritting your teeth as you do jobs like this, like you're so tense not to put any more pressure on this cow. Anyway, I'm going to shut up and keep going now. See, I actually use my hook to separate the layers, to push away the back layer, and to force away the top that I'm trying to cut away from the part we want to keep. You saw the group of cows that we're trimming today. Hardly any of them were lame. This is a farm that have around 500 cows, and this cow was the lamest of the lot. This is an incident of lameness. It's not a pandemic, it's not a huge problem on the farm. This is a cow that has had some sort of incident, most likely a bash to the outside of her foot, which has caused this episode of lameness. Look how deep in that cavity goes, look. That's stuck all the way up inside. This part of the hoof horn is so tough. It's the architectural part. This is what actually takes the whole of the cow's weight, not the sole. It's like if you imagine a bridge, this is the part that holds up the bridge itself, the legs if you like. And because this bit is so tough, if I press at the top of our hoof here, you can see that cavity moving which lets us know it goes all the way to the top here. So we're going to remove this portion of the wall. I said I wasn't going to use the grinder on this hoof, but it's going to be the quickest and most effective way. Sure, at first glance this hoof did look bad, but not half as bad as it's about to look. You see that cavity extends all the way up her outer wall horn, almost all the way to the coronet or the hairline. You can see me using the edge of the grinder here to strip away that hard architectural hoof horn before getting the knife out to do the finer work. This is very delicate work, even although it may not look like it. I need to put a huge amount of force into removing this hoof horn, and as you can see, there's a lot to be removed. Look, it goes right the way around the outside of her hoof. Look at that. It travels all the way up the inside of this hoof. What a mess. Wow, look at that. See the dermatitis here attacking the corium. Now this maybe doesn't look beautiful, but I'm actually really happy with it. We've got rid of all the detached horn, and that's gonna be crucial for this long, but hopefully prosperous healing process. Okay, let's continue and get this thing finished. This part of the trim is absolutely crucial. There are small fragments of hoof horn that aren't properly attached. 
and amongst the laminae, and if we leave them there, they will seriously hinder the healing process. Remember, this is detached, this is not something that's live. Yes, there is live tissue round about, but we are not cutting through anything that is still live or properly attached to the cow. This trim started off looking fairly graphic, but I think we can all agree that it's much, much worse than what we first envisioned. Look at the difference now on the right hand side compared to when we started on the left. If you compare them right now, we've removed all of this overburdening hoof horn and all of this part of the hoof capsule, which was keeping the dirt and debris trapped in here. So obviously we are going to wrap this, but more importantly than the salicylic acid is the iodine. Iodine is going to completely dehydrate the outer layers of tissue that have been exposed. It's going to harden it up and protect the inside so that it can heal and grow fresh, good, fantastic new hoof horn. Hopefully. So a problem like this is not going to be fixed overnight. It's literally impossible for it to be fixed within even the next couple of months. Horn or hoof horn grows between five and seven millimeters a month and the entire hoof capsule, so from top to bottom, is 75 millimeters high usually. That's 10 months. So even if we've done the absolute best possible job, a perfect execution of hoof trimming, it'll still take 10 months for this cow to be completely healed. Having said that, she should be much more comfortable almost instantly. In case you guys hadn't realized, by the way, Kevin is another brother-in-law of mine. So Craig is married to my sister and I am married to Kevin's sister. Who got the raw end of the deal? Yeah. Kevin, he says. <laughs> He'll get me as a brother-in-law. <laughs> so you guys will have been wondering, Kevin has been, we will look at our foot in a second, by the way. You guys might have been wondering, Kevin's been here and he's been away and he's been here and away and here and away and possibly been wondering why that is. Well, Kevin hurt his back really badly because he was a dairyman for years and years and all of that repetitive strain injury has herniated or prolapsed the disc in his back. Now, this is where I need to thank you guys. The NHS, so the National Health Service here in the UK, can be fantastic, but it's really struggling and Kevin couldn't get a back operation. Now, because you guys watch the videos, Obviously, I earn revenue from that. So Kevin has been up and down the country and you guys have helped to pay for that, or you guys have paid for that. And now he's actually due for his big operation on his back next week. And it's a really big one, which you guys have paid for by supporting this channel and watching these videos. So I can't thank you enough for being able to help him. Fingers crossed because his operation should be on Saturday. So hopefully, this will sound silly, hopefully you guys won't see him for another four weeks because he'll be on the mend. Anyway, let's go and see how her foot is doing because that block should be dry. Yeah, that was, that's right, I wasn't just talking to you, not caring about the cow being in the crush. We were actually waiting on our block drying. So let's get that foot in the ground and see how she feels now. Nice cow though, isn't she, look? I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I could have a pet cow. I just don't have enough space though. Look, even if you cuddle them, You'd think she'd pull away, wouldn't you? Nope. So look at this, this is her foot. When we first put her in the crush just a couple of minutes ago, she was padding at it. Look at her, she doesn't want to put that foot on the ground at all. It hurts to even touch the ground. Take a look now, barely a hint of movement. She's putting all of her weight on that orange block and it's alleviating the pain. So straight away, we don't know how she's gonna walk, but we do know she's now putting weight on that foot where she didn't want to just a few minutes ago. How satisfying is that? You don't need to comment, I know how satisfying it is. It's massively satisfying. For me, but probably more so to the cow. Slowly, slowly, easy, easy. She's putting weight on it and she's getting faster, look. She's starting to realize that it doesn't hurt quite as much as it did before. She's probably not sure why. This has been the Hoof GP, guys. And that, that was Cow 4687. And like I said, a massive thank you for you guys supporting this channel and helping people like Kevin get a back operation, which I bet you never thought you'd do today. 
but you're dead. <laughs>